Good evening. It is 6.05 and I call to order the Louisville 2025 Advisory Board of Thursday, February 11th, 2021. We do have a quorum present. The second order of business is the approval of minutes from September 17th. Are there any additions or corrections? I'm Hearing gonna... none, I'll accept a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve from Rob. I'll second. Amanda, was that you? A second Sam. from Amanda. All in favor? Aye, please. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Karen, your Karen, your second was from Tamala Bowie. Yeah. Thank you. Second was from Tamala Bowie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The third order of business is election of a co-chairman and a chairman. I will take motions from the floor. Are you going to do chairman first, Karen, or vice chair? Uh, let's do chairman first. I nominate Karen to continue. As I chair. would be happy to accept. I'll second that. Motion by Kathy. Amanda was the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I am happy to continue. Now for a co-chair. I open nominations for a co-chair. Everybody don't jump at once. <laughs> I nominate Amanda for co-chair. <laughs> I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded for Amanda to be co-chair. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Amanda is co-chair. Well, thank you very much. It's good to see you, Amanda. Nice to see you. The fourth thing on our uh, agenda this evening is to adopt the 2021 meeting schedule. Jennifer sent those out, a hard copy, or you got it in your email a little while ago. Those meetings would be, of course, the first meeting is February 11th tonight. The next is Thursday, April the 8th. Then Thursday, July the 8th. Then Thursday, October the 14th. Opinions, conversation, suggestions? So far they work. Oh, motion uh, to approve. Motion. Was that Rob? That's Tony. It was Tony, thank you. Uh, motion by Tony, second. I'll make a second. Okay, second by oh, Kathy. Wait, Kathy was doing it. Kathy, go with Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> second by Kathy Falconberry. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Then uh, the meeting schedule is as printed, and you will find that in the packet sent by Jennifer if you need a hard copy. Uh, Number five on our agenda is the 2025 update and our next steps for 2021. And I imagine that, is that Karen? Yes, that's Karen. She's gonna go through uh, the information with you. And just so you know, we have this report also uh, on the council agenda for the retreat, which is March 11th, 12th and 13th. So this is your preview. Thank you, Donna. Um, I am going to try to share my screen so I can show you the materials that are in the packet, which you got. Um, you got this material late this afternoon, but let me see if I can, uh, I hope I can share the screen. Um, do you see the screen now? Anybody? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yep, yeah, okay. we see it. All righty, great. So, um, so I'm excited at the progress we've made since the last time we all visited together back in October. Um, the 
what you're seeing on the screen right now is the draft cover. And um, what we are trying to do here, as you can see, is uh, do an update to the 2025 vision plan. You can see the same, uh, some of the same kind of graphics up here uh, that we had before, but with a, uh, I think this is a really nice new graphic. Um, we've tried to make it so that it looks like it's similar in the same family as the other report, but clearly that if you pick one of them up and the other one up, you will know that they're not the same report. Um, so you can tell them apart that way. And so we wanted to share this cover design with you. Um, we are in the process of working through the details of the text and the details of the graphics and getting that laid out in um, an InDesign, a graphic format, um, in order to be able to have that draft for the council retreat that Donna just mentioned. So uh, we are working hard on all of those different aspects of it. Uh, what I wanted to do tonight is show you the things that I think are probably of greatest interest to you um, since the, the last meeting we had. Um, the order, the, the table of contents, you see the beginning of that here with the, the a little bit about the update, but the vision statement and then the set of big moves. The big moves, the, the general topics here are the same ones we discussed in October. But what I've included in the packet here um, is that, that draft we had in October, but with redlining or track changes to show you the changes that we've made based on your input and based on the input we've gotten since our last meeting together. Uh, in December, we had a workshop with the Parks Board um, and got input from the Parks Board members. We also had a joint workshop with Planning and Zoning Commission, the Zoning Board of Adjustment, and the um, Old Town Design Advisory Board. So all of them have uh, provided comments and, and input. We've also, of course, been working with the staff to fine tune some of the things here. And so as, you, as we go through this, I will uh, kind of go through the pages on the screen, and I'm gonna pause at a couple of things that I think might be of greatest interest to you, but um, just, I'm happy to talk and ask answer any questions that you have as we go along. I think, um, you know, I would say, and I, I hope that you all will agree that this update, this new draft is um, very reflective of the community and it's a really exciting uh, advancement because you've accomplished so much since the, the plan was done originally. So here's the, the first big move about the green centerpiece. Um, the objectives, as you can see here, this is the same set of objectives that you saw when we talked last. The things that are in this kind of purple underlining are additions. In this case, you can see this change here about Lake Park and other properties is more of a clarification. But the one thing I want you to notice here is all of these green leaves, if you can see where my cursor is right now. Um, as I said when we talked before, we want to make sure that it's really clear that sustainability is interwoven throughout all of these moves throughout the plan, even though there is one big move specifically focused on it. Uh, so each of these things with the little leaf show that this is an action priority even though it's in the green centerpiece big move, it supports our sustainability objectives. So as you go through here and, and look at the draft, um, you'll see many, many, many of these things where it really, I hope, gets across the message about how interconnected all of these things are. So, um, so that's one of the things you'll notice here on green, green Centerpiece in particular, but you'll see it continued throughout all of the rest of the sections. And uh, I mentioned that the staff has been working on the refinements here, and there are several people on the, the meeting tonight who've been involved in that. So uh, Donna and Eric and Claire, and Stacy and the rest of y'all, if there's something you want to point out, um, please jump in and, and add that if I, don't, uh, if I don't mention it right off the bat. Extending the green is very similar to um, what you told us before. We have added an item in here that you'll see with the, the purple underlining um, related to community gardens. This is one of the things that we see as being really valuable as uh, both community building and in terms of supporting health in the community, especially for some of the, the low to moderate income folks in Louisville. So that's a new addition. Um, connecting Louisville's parks and trails to neighboring cities in the region was a suggestion from one of the members of the um, 
Old Town board, uh, but obviously that's an important component here. With Old Town, there are several points here. You see the bottom one about uh, new levels of emotional connectivity to Old Town. The objectives that we talked about last time really go to the idea that Old Town is the heart of Louisville. And I know that's your new branding for Old Town. So we wanted to strengthen the action items here so that it makes that kind of emotional connection as well as just um, some of the things that are a little more of the bricks and mortar uh, kinds of development. So you see that, you see retail that will charm and create a sense of identity. Again, we're trying to really go beyond just the, the physical aspects like the real estate investment analysis to move to something where Old Town really has that emotional connection as the heart of the city of Louisville. So you can see there's several other changes in here. Um, design standards to make sure that the character of Old Town is continued. Um, I know those of you who are involved in Old Town see this as a priority, and we heard that. Uh, I think that was a comment from a PNZ member um, to make sure that that is very clear in this update of the vision plan. Diverse and thriving neighborhoods, as you know, combines two of the earlier um, objectives. I think most of the items that you see here um, in terms of action priorities are similar uh, to the ones that you saw before. We've tried to clarify a few things and, in, and elaborate a little more on some of the, the city programs that are already underway that will help neighborhoods um, realizing that this is not just about um, things like the housing itself, but things like safety, crime, emergency preparedness, um, all of those kinds of things as well. So uh, you can see several of these additions here uh, that I think strengthen, uh, strengthen that discussion, strengthen the idea of working with the communities on this top one here uh, to help people really work together to come up with an identity and strengthen an identity. Uh, this is important for some of the neighborhoods in Louisville that don't have a really strong identity today. And we want to try to create that or strengthen that with their involvement. There are a number of action priorities in um, the, the neighborhood section here in the big move because there are a lot of different topics. Uh, I think I'm now, here's economic, this is economic vitality now, excuse me. Um, economic vitality, as you know, uh, we sh have shifted this focus to include a lot more emphasis on the Louisville labor force, the people in Louisville and those communities. I think much of this is gonna be similar to what you saw uh, before, but we, we did add an item here about emerging technologies that was a suggestion uh, from one of the PNZ members, I believe, or um, design, Old Town Design uh, Advisory Board. On identity, place, and communications, most of these are refinements that kind of add or elaborate on what's here already. This is the, going to be the longest of all the sections that you'll see in the new document because we've added a number of gateways and we've added a number of identity focal points. We've combined communications in with those and we've also added some priorities like the ones you see here that apply to all of the gateways and focal points. Um, this, the maps, I should mention, this is a, a GIS looking map. Um, the maps that you'll see in the draft document are going to look a lot better graphically. We have the graphic designer working right now on updating these maps so that they will be easier for someone to read who's not really familiar with, uh, with GIS technology or details of mapping. Um, you can see here all these, the different northern gateway that we had the southern on the page before, eastern, southwestern, and then the three identity focal points of the central I-35 uh, right here. That's uh, the Main Street subdistrict. This is the one right at Main Street connecting with Medical City Louisville. A Crown Center identity focal point, one of those that relates to Castle Hills and brings areas of Castle Hills into this plan as an important part of the overall Louisville community. The last point I want to make here on distinctive places is that these are intended to relate to places that are smaller than those big focal points, but really within individual neighborhoods, within individual neighborhood shopping districts. There should be things that make them feel unique, that make people identify and make people people feel uh, concern and care about the area where they live and feel uh, like it's there's something special there. 
Communications down here, as I said, this blends the earlier big move about communications, but adds in and emphasizes things like uh, heritage and public art, as well as some of the other activities like a marketing, the marketing and communications that James and his staff do so well. Sustainability starts at the bottom of this page. Um, we've added an objective here to tie this to that sustainability action plan. As you know, that draft is also now being completed. And I think that, that that's going to come along pretty much in concert with this update to the 2025 plan. So there's an objective here to not only adopt it, but implement it. Um, and you'll remember that we talked before about the action priorities here tying in with each of the major categories in that action plan. So energy, water, waste, equitable opportunities, health and wellness, transportation, all of the things that you see in highlights here are ones that tie back to, um, to what, what you'll see when you see that overall sustainability action plan. The last three moves here, this is the set of strategic moves that bring the council's strategic priorities into the same document. Uh, most of these are very similar to what you saw when we talked last. Uh, there's a few things that it, that uh, I think clarify or, or elaborate on things, but the values-driven organization that Louisville is a city and an organization that lives and implements the values that it, it uh, establishes. Data-driven that we're using all of the work that Gina and others do on the dashboard and all those other kinds of things um, to make decisions, to use that information to target where city resources are used. Um, and lastly, the connected city, which talks about all of those things ranging from communications to multimodal transportation to just simple connections among people. You see the DCTA uh, focus here, uh, the 10 minute walk to the park, uh, the things that, that uh, Stacy has been working on on that and Claire's leadership with DCTA. Um, all of those are emphasized here. Uh, we've added one more thing here about opportunities for virtual engagement in city meetings. Um, you know, we all I know would be happier if we could see each other in person, but the experience now over the last year has shown us that there is some value to having this option that people can connect uh, virtually with when they can't perhaps come down in person, can't make the time, can't drive or get to the location. And so the idea that we want to make sure that those kinds of opportunities we've all learned to use uh, would still be available in the future. So, um, so those are the things that are the changes since the version you saw last um, about the goals, the objectives, and the action priorities. The other parts of the overall plan document, the narratives that illustrate each of these big moves, the background information on big issues, the background on all of the public engagement that we did over the last year, all of those are being drafted and finalized now. Um, we expect that that overall complete draft will go to city council by the end of the month. I think our target, Donna, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not mistaken, is the 25th uh, to be able to have the whole complete document in the good graphic look um, at that point. So um, this is the substance. The, this is the policy part of it. Um, and so I'm really interested to hear any further comments that you all have tonight. Hopefully we captured your ideas correctly. And uh, I hope you're pleased with the input we've heard from some of the other boards and commissions uh, since the last time we all talked. Um, with that, let me see, Donna, if there's anything I missed, um, and then I'll be happy to answer any questions. You did a good job covering uh, all of the issues. So what we'll be asking council to do at retreat is to, to study all these. Number one, ask them if we've forgotten anything, but then to look at the, the action steps and help us with prioritization. Uh, what are the council priorities in implement, implementing these action steps? And that's going to roll into something we're working on with our development or with our departments related to business plans. So each department is going to develop a five-year business plan. And those business plans will include action steps from the 2025 that each department is responsible for. In addition to there are things that the departments do outside of the scope of 2025. And you'll see those issues uh, in their business plans also. Stacy has actually developed the model 
for our business plan, she and Gina. And so you'll see that presented at the uh, March retreat. So uh, Karen, I think uh, you did a good job covering it and you can just uh, answer any questions. Yeah, and, 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 and Donna, you reminded me of one other thing I meant to, to say, which is uh, we will be presenting that draft to the council at the retreat to get their feedback. Um, what happens after that is the other point I, that I wanted to, to note. And that is that after that uh, will be a, a process for recommendations from boards and commissions and then formal council action. So uh, that that will be happening in April. I would guess um, that that April 8th meeting of yours, you would probably have an opportunity uh, to make a formal recommendation on the complete document, um, though we would really like to hear your comments tonight to make sure that they get incorporated before uh, the draft that we send to council. Yeah, did you want to make any additional surveys that we're sending out? Donna, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you very well there. Yeah, Eric's told me I've, I've got an old computer at home. Sometimes you can't do the first sentences. I say, I'm sorry. So I was talking about the survey that's about oh, to go. Oh, out. oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's you're right, Donna. That's that's the other point. I'm I'm sorry. I'm I've have. I've read the first part of my list and not the rest of it today. Um, the other the other thing about the survey is that um, since we haven't been able to have um, in-person meetings, usually we would try to have some kind of a workshop or an open house or something for people in the community uh, to give us feedback on the draft, um, particularly since so many people in so many parts of Louisville contributed to creating this this document. Since we can't really do that with COVID, we are we have have put together an online survey and the online survey is set up so that it basically shares these things that you're seeing tonight, the goal objectives and action items and gives people a way to quickly comment on which ones they think are important priorities for the next five years. So um, we'll be sending that, um, that link to that survey out probably in the next few days, the beginning of next week. Um, you all will receive that. We'll also be sending that to all the people who were who participated at the Touchpoint events in January of last year, which seems like uh, generations ago generations now. Ago. Um, and as well, all of the people who participated in all the meetings that the staff did in the fall of 2019 with all the different organizations in neighborhoods, in the chamber, in the churches, in the, the Hispanic and Chin communities, all of those different groups. Uh, we'll be sending all of them uh, that link and that request to do that online survey. So I expect that we will have the input from that, some of the input probably by the time of the council retreat, and probably we'll be still sifting through some of that a little bit afterwards. Um, you all will be among the folks that get that link um, so when you get that, and I would guess that'll be early next week, um, I hope that you might use that as an opportunity to weigh in on which ones of these action priorities you think are the most important. Um, and that will give us input, as I said, to, to share with council as well. So Karen, that's what we have for the committee tonight and we can answer any questions. Uh, yes, I was going to call for questions or questions, comments at this point in time. Yeah, Karen, um, I've got one, just one quick uh, comment. I, I think it was page 13 or 14. There were a couple acronyms that were in there, and I didn't know what they were. Would you mind maybe spelling those out in parentheses? Let's just see. For people that read it. Um, yes, um, let's... Yeah, Rob, that's a really helpful comment. Let me make sure of right there, where there it is. Are. TIF and PID. Aha, uh -huh. perfect. Yes, I will. I will definitely do that. Thank you. I appreciate that that feedback. Thanks. I'll I'll definitely add those in. Thank Thanks, you. Rob. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thanks, Rob. I see DCTA too, so they probably want to spell that out. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Uh, Donna, I have retreat as March 11th to the 13th. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, we will be holding the retreat locally. Uh, it'll be over in the annex in the community room. Of course, with COVID, it will still probably be by Zoom. I am hoping to have the council in person, but I'm not even for sure about that right now. They may be by Zoom too. 
which to me seems like a very awkward way to hold a retreat, but, uh, you know, we're, it is we're, the way it is. It is the way it is. Yeah. Anyone else with comments, questions? If not, we can go ahead with number six, which is the Castle Hills education process. So at our last year's retreat, and as Karen said, the 2020 retreat, which seems like it was 20 years ago, uh, the council gave us direction uh, that we should form a committee made up of Castle Hills residents so we could talk about uh, issues that are important to the Castle Hills community. Uh, we could educate those folks and those folks could go out and help educate others in their community. So we actually appointed the committee at the, towards the end of 2020. Uh, we started our meetings uh, in 2021. We've held two meetings to date. Uh, you've got a link. Uh, Eric, can you pull up the presentation? Yeah, there we go. Are y'all seeing that? Yes. I see it, yes. Yeah, so you can go forward. Yeah, so, so the link, Eric, will, can you hit, yeah, there we go. So, so this is out on our website, and what we're doing, we, we are actually developing uh, position papers for the residents. What we thought would be most important would be really to take some deep dives into various issues and then provide those reports to the Castle Hills Committee. And that committee, by the way, is made up of two members from each one of the water district boards, as well as some at-large uh, residents. Uh, and so we're developing these in-depth reports, and then we meet with the groups just to answer questions. And I think we've had, John's on the, uh, on the call, and he can uh, comment also uh, as a Castle Hills resident, but I think we've had some really good discussions uh, the reports, though, then after the meeting are posted out here online. So there's a lot of data here. I've, I've told the, my own staff that I think these are good uh, to do for a variety of reasons, not only to uh, educate the uh, folks in Castle Hills, but to really uh, document history. So these mm -hmm. are the things we've, we've developed, we've mm -hmm. lived through. Eric and I have lived through most of it. Uh, and so we won't always be here. We will we retire one day. And so this documents everything that we've been through um, over the, since 1996. And so um, we, ha we have a calendar uh, that we've developed and we're covering a variety of topics. Uh, you'll see mm -hmm. the, at the February 18th, we're gonna start looking at public services, long range plans, infrastructure maintenance, maintenance license agreement, et cetera. So you see topics planned for each one of these. We'll have city staff available to respond to questions. The committee's also discussing how they're gonna go out and talk with their neighbors, uh, the folks in the Castle Hills community about uh, castle or uh, annexation and answer uh, questions. So uh, there, at the end, you have uh, the listing of the board members also, or the committee members. So with that, uh, again, we are putting uh, the documents out online. And after we have the meeting, we, if we, the questions we get at the meeting, we also amend uh, or we add additional information to answer those questions. And we put that out online also. So I'll answer any questions. I think they're going well. John, do you want to comment? No, I would agree. They're going well. It's a lot of information for the Castles residents to take in, but I think we've had pretty good participation in those who have read the reports. Some of them are pretty lengthy, but um, I think we've had good uh, participation of the residents, and definitely there's a there, there's a, a strong interest of understanding how Castle Hills is going to be a part of Louisville going forward. Now we're still moving toward uh, a planned annexation that would be effective in December. Uh, of this year. So um, we're just trying to get everybody's questions answered before that time. 
And Donna, if I if I might jump in for a second, since I'm I'm uh, working with uh, with the city on these meetings, I'd have to tell you all that um, I've been impressed with the way that all of the committee members have been so diligent and thorough in reading all this information. I mean, this is really like a, a master's class in how a city operates. By the time that they get done with all this. I mean, it's way more information than most cities would ever put down on paper to help explain things. And um, I've been really pleased with the level of attention and detail that people have been focused on. The staff has been doing a super job on putting all of that down on paper, but um, I'm really impressed with the interest level and the, the diligence of the committee members. And I, I think that bodes really well for uh, the annexation and the cooperation and, you know, as, as this whole community comes together. We had for the board tonight, uh, unless there are questions. I really appreciate the documentation on the Castle Hills process. It, it's giving us all a better insight into what's happening and what's coming. At this point, I'd like to remind everybody, please, to put the dates of this year's meetings on their calendars so that you know that's coming. And um, I can't wait to see y'all again. <laughs> It's just, it seems like it's been an eternity. Okay. I get my second shot next week. So okay. at this point, I'm ready to call for adjournment if there's no more discussion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Pamela moves to adjourn. Do I have a second? I'll second. second. Second by Rob. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Good night, y'all.